Hey, this is Brian Elaine with CrowdScribe, and this is Six and a Half Questions with Gary Molander. Is it Gary Reginald Molander? That's right. <laughs> wow, what a what a guess. <laughs> no, no Reginald here. What is it? Alan. A L A N. Just A L A N. It's not spelled some other fancy way. Fantastic. Gary yeah. is the founder of Floodgate Productions and the author of Pursuing Christ: Creating Art, which he self-published a couple years ago. Gary, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Great to be here with you, Brian. All right, let's jump in. Question number one. Before we talk about your book, uh, let's talk about writing. What are your ideal writing conditions? Oh, ideal writing conditions. Um, I write the best when something else is going on around me, So, uh, but I need to be alone um, in my own space. So uh, oftentimes, for most of my book and whenever I blog, I, I end up at Starbucks or some coffee house, and I just go at it there. Um, and at the very end of my book, when the deadlines were really coming up, um, I stayed up just late at night on the couch. But for the most part, ideal would be uh, people around me, but not bothering me. Question number two. I know it's been a couple years, but as you look back on the writing process for your book, what do you think surprised you the most about it? Uh, about the writing process itself? Yeah. Um, or did anything surprise you? Yeah, um, I think the most surprising thing was the time it took to edit. Okay. So it's one thing just to just to blog and to to go to read through your blog two or three times before you publish. Yeah, it's a whole other thing for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it's just a whole other thing to spend so much time in editing and making sure every word is right. And of course, when you self-publish, there no one's helping you edit. And so, um, you know, that, that surprised me, the time it took just to make sure everything was just right. Yeah. And did you hire an editor at all for the process? No, um, I actually do that to myself okay. and have other, other books as well for, for friends. So it, it came naturally. I probably should have hired somebody, but I was out of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Question number three, what part of the book writing process gave you the most energy? And maybe to clarify that for you, I know some authors really love looking at a blank page and the endless possibilities and some mm. like the end of the process where it's just about ready and just need a few refining tweaks. Did either of those do it for you? I get the most energy when the idea comes. Okay. And, and for me, a great idea is one that probably is a little bit skewed, a little bit alternative, a little different, um, probably to a familiar idea. And so when I get those ideas and I can be wherever I am, when I get the idea, for me, I can't wait to, to write it down and to begin fleshing it out. So for me, probably when I get the idea and then in the process, when I took the idea and began to flesh it out. So I don't enjoy staring at a blank piece of paper, um, you know, uh, but I do, I do enjoy opening up a, a, a blank Word document or pages document and beginning to flesh out an idea. That was without a doubt, still is, uh, the most, um, that bring, it brings my heart alive. Yeah. Uh, question number four, so many folks out there feel like they have a book inside of them. As someone who has gone through the book writing process, what advice do you have for them in terms of approaching a dream like that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, um, my blog started my book. So it wasn't, I didn't ever think I want to write a book. What I started doing was exploring themes on a blog. And it was at times the wrong themes. It was at times, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have the elevator pitch to start out. I, I just had to go explore for about two years on the blog. And uh, then once the blog began to sort of take shape and uh, I began to pay attention to who was commenting and what they were saying, and I looked around and there was this little artistic community who was listening. Um, and then I, th I thought, I've got half of a book here already written. Yeah. I'll just do the other half uh, uh, from stuff I've always wanted to write about but haven't. So for me, the blog was I, I, kind of a test, but, but more, more than a test, it was a real discovery process for me. The, the, I, I guess, Brian, the, the advice I would say is figure out somewhere, some way to maybe test it uh, before going to print. Um, for me, that really worked. Yeah. 
Question number five, of the last 10 books that you've purchased or read, uh, how many have been digital? How many have been print? All print. All print. Don't, I don't do the digital thing. Um, I just turned 49, and I think that there's something there. I, I, I don't meet a lot of people my age who are into the digital thing. Um, we want to hold it in our hands. We want to mark it up, uh, and we want to go back. And um, unfortunately, when I'm reading something in digital print, and this is just me, this is not... Mm -hmm. It's not any value judgment. I read it slower in print, and I read it more intently. If it's not, if I'm not holding it, it feels to me like I'm just going through an RSS feed of my favorite bloggers and just kind of hurrying through and not really letting the themes digest. Hmm. Oh, why it's that way? It just is. Yeah, fascinating. Question number six: Is there a book that you've read this past year that you think we should pick up and read? Hmm. Putting you on the spot here. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Martin, um, Prototype. Okay. Which, uh, he is, uh, Martin's a, uh, a pastor uh, from the Pentecostal tradition, which I'm not a part of at all. Uh, but he's, he's just out there enough to really, I just like him a lot. And, um, and so he wrote, he, he pastors a church in, I believe, Charlotte uh, called Renabatu's Church. And the sub is, the, the tagline is for liars, dreamers, and misfits. And I fit. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I, I listened to his podcast, and, but he wrote a book called Prototype and cannot recommend it highly enough for everybody. Awesome. Awesome. All right, last question. Question number seven. Favorite sports team? San Francisco Giants. Okay. No hesitation there. No hesitation, even after this year. Uh, it has been a rough year for you guys. Rough year. Yeah. Is there a close second? Football, maybe? Basketball? Well, unfortunately, is the Rams, uh, the St. Louis Rams. Okay. Um, and, you know, w I think we got a good year coming up. <laughs> <laughs> That's since 2000. But, uh, you know, it's um, – and basketball I used to be into, but that was that was bird – Magic Johnson, Dr. J era, so sure. really give a rip much about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you can find Gary online at GaryMo.com. That's GaryMo.com. And to connect with readers and authors, find great books, and maybe even publish your own, visit CrowdScribe.com. Gary, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Brian.